Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another Popper video. Um, Matthew F. gave me a dealer's choice donation deck list uh, for Popper, and so we're going to be playing a little Popper today. Um, I went to the Popper Discord, and Alex Ullman uh, actually sent me in the way of the Hot Dogs deck, or the Mono Red Blitz deck, uh, and so I'm going to be running that today. Um, if you are a Redditor and you follow the Popper subreddit, you might have come across Finger Silly's post where they claimed to be at an 80% win rate with this deck list, and they had a 17 win match streak. Uh, that's pretty nuts. For those of you who don't play competitively, like if you're posting something over 60% consistently, that's really good. My friend Bryant Cook is on an absolute heater uh, with TES right now, and he's in the low 70s. I think he's at like a 74% win rate or something like that, and that's just like absolutely insane, insane for an extended period. Now, this user didn't post like an extended data set or a spreadsheet or anything or say how many games this 80% uh, percent match win rate was out of, uh, but it's enough to raise an eyebrow. So the question is, like, is this an 80% win rate? Is this, is this a deck that gets something banned from it? Or is this just a really good deck list? Or is this something like, oh, now that people know this exists, it's not good? Uh, let's figure out this. So uh, essentially, this is an updated version of the old Kilnfiend deck that used to exist in Pauper. So Kilnfiend, Kilnfiend, Mage Ring Bully, as well as Festival Crasher, all grow when you cast instant and sorcery spells. So our goal here is to chain through a handful of spells and kind of get an alpha strike that kills our opponent in a single turn. Schemer Battle Rage is one of the best ways to enable this. It can give double strike as well as trample if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. Uh, the instant speed plus this trample effect is probably what gives it the nod over the similar 1 mana Assault Strobe. Uh, this deck is playing a handful of things that you might not know what they are, such as Ancestral Anger. Target creature gets trample and plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is 1 plus the number of cards named this in your graveyard and draw a card. So effectively, this gives plus 1 plus O trample and draws a card and gets a little bit better from there if you happen to have multiple of them, say because you had thrown some of them into your graveyard. Deck is also playing Crash Through, which gives creature you control trample until end of turn, and you get to draw a card. So essentially, as long as we're not playing against a hyper dense removal deck list, uh, we should be able to pretty consistently goldfish on probably like turn three or four. Turn two, we play our creature. Next turn, we're just going for it. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, we have Brute Force, which is a Color shifted gigantic growth, lightning bolt, pyroblast, flaring pain, so that damage can't be prevented because uh, fog effects are very real in Popper, as well as underworld rage hound. It attacks each combat if able and has escape four. Uh, I imagine this is for slower controlling matchups. Um, of note, uh, if you do kind of cruise the Popper subreddit, uh, this user has a very popular post that does kind of have a quick sideboard guide breakdown. Um, so I'm just going to kind of keep that up on the other screen to help me out with sideboarding. Um, in very, very briefly chatting with Alex uh, Ullman uh, about the deck, um, he said he didn't think the brute forces should be there, but that it should be a combination of gut shots and mine collapses. So if you are testing this deck, uh, please consider those cards in this slot. Uh, the user who posted this deck list said, I'm playing Brute Force for the burn matchup because they have so many removal spells that I just need to be able to have more things to pump my creatures out of range of removal spells. So that's the logic for this card. All right, uh, yeah, at this point, let's go ahead and just uh, hop into it. If you're new here and you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular follower, please throw me a like before this video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's battle. Okay, so I have a Mage Ring Bully. It has Prowess. I have a Teamer Battle Rage. I have another thing that draws a card. I think this is good enough to be a keep. I think this is kind of like the worst of my threats because this is only growing by one each time. Um, and I don't really love the redundant team or battle rage, but like I would be absolutely be keeping this on six. I think I'm good with it. All right, land go. 
I, I think like just especially on the play, I just keep hands that have a turn one threat. All right, so we're potentially playing against like a, ooh, baby. Hello, friend. Hello. Um, anyway, we're potentially playing against some sort of like Boros Bully style deck. Um, or like a Glint Hawk style deck. Um, I don't have anything free to save that, unfortunately. All right. More life for you. The sorcery as well. I wonder if anticipating opposing removal, I was supposed to play out the Mage Ring Bully first and keep the, the Kiln Fiend as backup. Sure. Ugh. All right. <laughs> This right here, this right here is why Trample is important, yo. All right. Um, I am going to cycle this immediately because I still have three. Well, maybe I play this first, actually, because this draws a card. Let's do this. Let's yield to this trigger. All right. I do not want another land there. Uh, let's, uh. Okay. Uh, so I've got a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, you attack each turn of Fable. I can't make the mistake of not doing it. All right, opponent is throwing everything in front of the bus here. I'm fine with just doing this. So, note, at the time this resolves, I do control a creature uh, with at least four power. So, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a scary amount of value. Uh as I'm sure is very clear here. I, I need not a mountains here. I just need to draw something. Yikes. Uh, you're a little late. You would have been very good at uh, helping me survive Galvanic Blasts. Um, so now I'm in trouble. I need to essentially go and find a way to get a creature and kill my opponent from at least 17. Oh my god. Uh, that's horrifying. I might need to lava dart. Jesus. Um, I might need to just like lava dart and kill that thing because I don't think I'm going to beat this lifelink. Um, I guess I wait a turn though. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have been playing some of these additional lands for the sake of, uh, uh, for the sake of, uh, faithless looting specifically. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah. Um, Alex Ullman, by the way, wrote a really good article about card advantage in Pauper being stored in permanence rather than being stored in cards. Highly encourage checking it out. Oh my god. Um, so can't take this out of the way this turn. I probably have to cast a spell so that I'm not just completely without a creature oh shit this is only plus one plus one i guess i'm doing this again in which case i should have gone after glint hawk i guess oh well it, it is what it is um i i think my opponent is enough ahead on cards here um i'm not winning this one anyway um like my opponent gains six life here really what if i what if i block what if i block and teamer battle rage should have played this differently. Uh, so I should have dealt one damage to this so that I could team or battle rage, have five first strike damage, and then trade with this. Uh, since I didn't do that, I'm just going to let this go and see if I can draw into something just insane. Okay. This draws a card. That's good. See where this goes. Mountain. Mountain is not getting me to where I need to go. Uh, I'm going to hold... Team or Battle Rage rather than hit opponent for 10. Um, but, like, I, I also just have, like, Samurai to worry about here. Delta Rebirth. All right. I'm going to F6. Like, what, whatever you do, you do here. I'm taking seven. Oh, Jesus. How many experimental synthesizers has my opponent? All right. 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 I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Um, what does the internet say I should do for Boros Bully? Uh, I'm assuming that is Boros Flashback. Well, okay, I, I don't know if they're still calling this Boros Bully. It's like Boros Kitty, Red White Artifacts, whatever you want to think of it as. Boros Synthesizer. Nothing. 
I'm going to look at the cards here and see if I agree with that. Uh, Lightning Bolt has some amount of value as a way to take, uh, what should I call it off the table, uh, Seeker of the Way. I'm going to follow the wisdom of the person who is supposedly winning 80% with this deck and board, as they say. This has a creature. I can Faithless Looting to discard an Ancestral Anger and try to use that to find my second land. So I'll have a draw step plus two Faithless Looting draws to find my second land. I think I'm fine with this. All right, land drop, Faithless Looting. Oh, cool. Yeah, I will discard one Ancestral Anger, one Lava Dart. And discarding the Lava Dart is actually particularly cool. This is an instant, right? Yeah, this is an instant, which means I can use that to protect against a like Lightning Bolt or Galvanic Blast type effect. And next turn, oh buddy, next turn feels like murder. All right, there's a Synthesizer. All right, there's, a, there's a Land Drop. Okay. Anamorphos. Let's always yield to that. I pick red, red. Manamorphos. I will again pick red, red. Um, I would like to find a land. I can Teamer Battle Rage and hit my opponent for 14 as of right now. Oh, wait, uh, I also have a Lava Dart from Graveyard. So this is plus two, plus four. Uh, this is very nearly putting my opponent dead already. I think they're just dead, though, if I hit a land. I will go ahead and loot. Okay, yeah, there's there's my land. Um, so I will discard a Battle Rage, like a Crash Through. So land drop. There's two mana. Team or Battle Rage. There's nine Double Strike. Lava Dart you. Sacrificing that. There's 22 damage. On turn three. Hot damn. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, plan worked perfectly of not sideboarding, so let's do that again. Ooh, okay, yeah, I'll absolutely keep this. I am unsure if I want to play my Faithless Looting on turn one. Like, I kind of want to play that once Festival Crasher is in play. With a second Looting drawn now, though, I think I'm good with just doing this. Um... I think I will value discard a looting, and I think I'll discard a land over a lava dart. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. I would love to cast lava dart twice. Um, essentially, at this point, I'm looking to hit a uh, double strike effect, um, and I think I will just play out my festival crasher right now, rather than uh, try to just like junk lava dart and kill this thing immediately. Yes, you can have your three life this turn. I am hoping to damn near kill my opponent next turn. I don't know if I will actually factually get there. Um, actually, hold on. Do I mutagenic growth? I can just block mutagenic growth, kill this thing, never have to worry about the life gain again. I think I'm good with that. All right, mutagenic growth, paying some life. I've got a 5-5. Five, five. You're at 23. And now I'm just going to churn together a bunch of copies of Manamorphos and see where this goes. Always yield. Red, red. Manamorphos. Always yield. Red, red. Yep. Ooh, cool. Um, I'll Manamorphos again here. At some point, I probably just do want to play the Festival Crasher, but... Okay. Mountain's cool. Mountain means I probably just go ahead and cast a Faithless Looting here. Um, I will discard... My opponent doesn't have red mana showing. I think I'm just going to discard Mountain Bully here. Yeah, I think I'm going to be good with that. Play my third land drop. Play a second creature. Bash in for nine. Call that a turn. I can't protect these from Lightning Bolt effects currently. But I have multiple creatures, and so my spells are going to go further. Yeah, this is fine. Ooh, that's good. Um, is my opponent dead? Apostle's Blessing is target creature. So I can only force one of these through. Um, so assuming one of these gets chump blocked, I have what? One, two, three, 
Not a bad amount of damage. I think I just wait to kill my opponent until next turn. Yeah, I think I plan on playing Kiln Fiend and then just trying to kill my opponent next turn. Uh, we'll see how they block. Alright, we are seeing a double block. Um, just give this protection from white. Or alternatively, I just lava dart one of these things and then take both creatures off the board and let this die and then play Kiln Fiend. I'm good with that. Alright, there's my lava dart. Let's call that good. All right. Second main phase, I play a Kiln Fiend. I have Lava Dart keeping me safe from removal. Yeah, my opponent does not want to be doing this right now. They they need to be playing to the board. Okay, there's the concession. Okay, uh, strong start to the league. I got obliterated in game one there, and then my opponent just like could not get off the ground in the remaining two games before I just had too much pressure on. I am on the draw for this round. I will be keeping this hand. I have two creatures, three lands, two cantripping spells. Uh, it looks like we're probably playing against an affinity or affinity-like deck. I think I am good with casting this looting. I'm going to get rid of a bully here and I think a mountain. Uh, Kiln Fiend and Fest Festival Crasher are basically the same, right? Festival Crasher is just a rarian. Okay. Um... Uh, this has one more point of toughness, right? So this is plus three plus O. Oh, this is plus two plus O. Oh. Galvanic Blast can happen. Galvanic Blast doesn't remove this. It does remove this. If, or I guess, sorry, they have Metalcraft. Either one of them is going to die. If either one of them is going to die, I'm going to play my higher upside one first. Okay, there's the third artifact land. Frogmite is fine. Need a, I need a way through. That's what I don't have right now. Sure. That's fine. Okay, yeah, there's there's the Galv Blast. Four damage. Uh, very easily kills either one of those things. Um, so let's play out my Festival Crasher. And I can go from here. Like, the more aggressive my opponent gets with their creatures, the easier it is for me to do something cool. Um... My opponent is going to have some time to do, like, Deadly Dispute, uh, Blood, Blood Fountain, um, Nonsense, or whatever it is they're going to do. Uh, wow, okay, I am a little behind on board. Don't have anything that lets me really punish this attack here. Like, I can do some Lava Dart stuff and kill it, but I, I cannot let this creature leave play. This, this is my path to victory. I need... Um, double strike nonsense. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Can I go yet? 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm not dead on board next turn. I think I am going to start by casting some mana morphoses rather than just immediately going for a faithless looting. Uh, okay. I want to see if I find another creature. That makes it easier to go off next turn. Loot from graveyard here and still make a land drop and do a thing. If I loot from hand, I live the double strike dream still, though. I'm, I'm going to loot from hand. Eee. This is going to go away. One of these is going to go away, I think. I think I am then going to make a land drop. Play Festival Crasher. And I'm going to go ahead and swing in. And it's up to my opponent to make some blocks. And we'll see how much of their board I get to just absolutely crush with this. Uh, I find it difficult to anticipate exactly what my opponent is going to do here. They can just chump. Or they can throw a whole bunch of things in front. Okay, that's blocking order. Um, so I am going to kill all of these things. I think like this. I think I'm just going to ding one of those. Take that out. I wish I had found a trample source. That didn't work out. But now I have two Lava Darts plus a Mutagenic Growth in Graveyard to try to swing out again next turn. And I get to Faithless Looting to filter my next draw. All right, that's a Wellspring. That's fine. Everything that doesn't contribute to the board right now, I don't care about. I don't care about the card advantage right now. My opponent has 10 power in play, and I have question mark, question mark, question mark amounts of power in play. Um, am I just eating that? 
I can play this game where I try to defensively stop my opponent. I don't know that I win that game. I think I'm just going to try to kill my opponent next turn by finding a trample source. And then I can go defensive the following turn if I need to with two different creatures back. Oh. Straight up. Goblin Bushwhacker. Multiple mutagenic growths. Does them playing this mean they have another one? Unsure. Uh, let's cast this and see where this goes. Ancestral Anger. This is a trample effect. I'm getting rid of this and this. We'll make one of these have trample. Nah, that's not what I'm looking for. So I can go Lava Dart, Lava Dart. You're at 18. And this will be at 10. Yeah, I'm not quite getting there. I think I have to leave back one Festival Crasher. But I think at this point, I can go ahead and attack with this one. Maybe I should have, like, played more defensively than this. Okay, opponent is going for two blocks here. I could double Lava Dart, kill one of these and get in a lot of damage, and then use Mutagenic Growth to block and deal with a Mirror Enforcer and try to finish things off the following turn. Or I could use Mutagenic Growth. I'd like to use Mutagenic Growth as a combat trick, though... So let's go with the Lava Dart line. Junk that Frogmite. This is 8 damage to my opponent. They're at 12. They also have to play a little bit scared, right? Like I... Well, I guess the Faithless Lootings in the Graveyard are a little less scary now. I can Mutagenic Growth and play one other thing pretty easily. Sure. Okay. Or Frogmite. Do we have any cool things that blow up artifacts? Not so much. Two red mana. Is that a Bushwhacker? Bushwhacker is very bad for me. Okay, I don't know that I survive this anymore because I can stop a Mirror Enforcer and I take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13. Yeah. That is going to get me. Alright, I, I will concede here. I think I could have played that one better. I think I could have played more defensively and tried to uh, drag this game on. Uh, sideboard versus Affinity. Nothing. Okay. I mean, I could see Lightning Bolt. Uh, this is Artifact too, right? Yeah. Alright. My opponent just had a lot of bodies in play very quickly. Um, I will absolutely keep this hand. I have a way to get Trample. I have a way to get through Artifacts. And I have something that I can... Like, this is going to be a different spell. I just get to cycle this on turn one and turn it into a spell. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I don't want my opponent to Galv Blast this creature, um, but without a third land, I don't think I get to do anything about that. That just kind of is what it is if it happens. Uh, my hand will be very bad if that happens. Don't do it. I have so much to live for. All right. Um, let's try to looting into land plus threat. I did not succeed. Um, I will throw away a lava dart here and one apostle's blessing. And this is, uh, kind of my worst threat. It's still fine. Um, this time around I can lava dart to protect it if I have to, but I'm very afraid of my opponent, uh, vomiting mirror enforcers into play either this turn or next turn. This. For a single colorless air enforcer. Yeah, okay. So I will play my bully. I need a double strike effect. That's the thing that will set my current hand over the top. I do not have a lot of time. Uh, Alright. So this is actually very bad for me. Because now my opponent has both artifact creatures and red creatures. Oh, fuck. Edicts sure don't. Uh, get stopped by any of this stuff. Uh, yeah, I am not prepared for this matchup. I have zero, zero sideboard cards for it. And, uh, yeah. This one doesn't feel good. Uh, let's try to metamorphose and get to a new creature. Oh, uh, this feels bad. Use target creature. I, I, I need to cycle through these cards to find a threat. Uh, I found one, but I can't play it. I think I'm dead. I can double Lava Dart something to take it out of play, but I take 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. I take 11 damage. I don't get to play a threat this turn. Yeah. 
I, uh, I feel comfortable throwing in the towel there. That does not feel like a good matchup. Okay, um, I'm going to keep my round three opening hand here. Um, this hand's a little different from a bunch of my previous ones, because a bunch of the previous ones have been play creatures, start going for damage immediately, whereas I think this hand is going to be play double Kiln Fiend and then try to do my thing. Um, that may change depending on what I draw. Like, if I draw a double strike spell, like, it's on. Otherwise, I will probably do something like just play a Faithless... Oh, never mind. Um, I think I just play Land Kiln Fiend. It's possible it is correct to just play Kiln Fiend and then use Faithless Looting to get rid of lands. But I am going to anticipate that... I am going to need the third land to just vomit out all of the things that I want to next to do next turn and just play the third land now in case I want... Fuck me! Uh, in case I want a fourth land drop for any reason. Okay. Uh, this has been rough. Never mind. Uh, that's fine. Um, I am not going to play this next land, though. I almost certainly want to loot away this land. Third journey to nowhere happens. I'm flipping the table. Uh, Monarch, huh? Uh, if I can get through, and I can, uh, if I can get through, that's not that bad for me. Uh, let's yield to this. Red. Red? This is a sorcery. Uh, I'm going to looting now in case I discard some copies of Ancestry. Full anger. Uh, discard land, land. I have not made a land drop yet. I have not made a land drop yet. Ancestral anger. Draw a card. More mountain. I don't really want more mountain. Yeah? It's time to go ahead and crash in. Alright, the opponent does not block. Am I just taking team or battle rage damage this turn? A lot of damage. Seeing as I'm about to be the monarch and I'm about to draw another card. I think I'm just good with that, but it's possible I should not do that. All right. Opponent's at seven. I draw a card. Another threat is fantastic. My opponent has to turn this sideways if they want to become the monarch, which means they're not blocking with it, very notably. Lava Dart means they're effectively at five. I do need to get in another hit. So my opponent needs to become the monarch and then either answer my creature or place something that can block it, and it's going to have to block it through that. Main deck, Angelic Renewal? Wild. Okay. I, I was, like, very much not expecting that. Like, I played one of those in the sideboard of, like, the Turbo Reanimator deck that I did. Okay, it is, it is coming in here. So, my opponent becomes the Monarch. So, like, the next question... Is like, do they have something that at instant speed can answer this creature? Uh, Ancestral Anger is cool. It's a sorcery. I will start here. Uh, this will also just cantrip. All right, so that, oh, wow, that's really good. At this point, am I playing this land? I think I play this land to play around soft permission. All right, bash in for five. No blocks. Attempt to lava dart you. Prohibit. That is going to counter that spell. Absolutely. You may absolutely counter that spell. I will now Lava Dart you. Sacrificing a mountain. Dealing 7 damage in combat with backup. Holy cow! Uh, I did not expect that I had any chance to win after I ate double Journey to Nowhere to start off with. Alright, um... So we are playing against a... What I presume is a blue-white flicker deck. And the recommendation is minus three crash through and minus one ancestral anger in order to add four pyroblasts. That makes sense to me. Um, Underworld Rage Hound is the sort of thing that I want versus control decks, but probably not a white control deck that is just sending my stuff to the exile zone. Um, so this feels good. My hand here does not have any threats. I am just going to go ahead and mulligan. This is a very good hand that needs a second land. I have Faithless Looting to find it. I think I am just going to keep this land, this hand, and hope that between 
my next two draw steps and faithless looting, I can go and find another land drop. If I find two land drops, there is a world where I sandbag Festival Crasher for a turn cycle. Oh, hell yeah. Um, I'm going to discard Faithless Looting and maybe Mutagenic Growth here. Actually, maybe I don't discard Faithless Looting. I need it if I don't hit my next land drop. Maybe on the mana that I have, Apostle's Blessing is too hard. Uh, oh, this is tough. I go with this. I really hope to just hit that land. A little unfortunate if there's no land in our top four cards, but like that sort of thing is going to happen sometimes, right? Yep, okay. No land in top four. So let's attempt to loot into another land. And unfortunately, we're going to be pe playing this at a very slow pace. All right, there's a planes for my opponent. Cool. I will discard Lava Dart as one of mine. I am not sure about the other. Part of me just wants to keep three dudes. But Mage Ring Bully is significantly worse than the other threats, so I think I'm just going to call this good. I think I have given my opponent setup time, though, uh, which is going to be dangerous. Answer is fine. All right. Am I fine playing the land drop? Yes. I'm going to let the Festival Crasher get removed first, since the Kiln Fiend gets more gas per spell. I don't know my opponent's deck list well enough to know, like, exactly which removal cards I need to be playing around. Um, this may be another one of those times where I... Blue Elemental Blast is the answer. Uh, absolutely. This is kind of why I wanted to keep this, but when I was land light, it just, like, wasn't super an option. Um, don't love this. Um, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. It did not eat a white removal spell or another blast immediately. That's good. But lots of things can happen on five mana from my opponent. Uh, yeah, skipping my next combat phase is rough, and my opponent is going to blink the shit out of this card. Um, I like all of the cards in my hand. I am not going to loot right now. I am going to need a blast to disrupt this uh, current scenario. This this game's not like lost yet, but I am in rough shape. Like it's turn six, my opponent's at twenty. That's not where my deck wants to be. The fact that a bunch of these things have to be cast at sorcery speed doesn't help. I think I am going to cast a moderate number of cards and then put a Mage Ring Bully into play. A red, red. This is awkward, because if my opponent doesn't actually have anything, I have so much damage this turn. With a team or Battle Rage. I think I'm going to play Mage Ring Bully now, though. And just straight up attack with Kiln Fiend right now. And just kind of sandbag these spells. Send them. My opponent is blocking. I'm gonna blink it after blocks. Yeah. Yeah, that's miserable. I assume these stack, right? I don't know if these stack. Um there's probably a very obvious ruling on this with the card. Let's see if I can pull it up. Um actually my opponent's playing pretty quickly. I guess I'll just figure it out. All right, so I can play out a bunch of creatures. Eventually, I will get a combat step. Not now, but soon, maybe. I guess it's relevant this next on my next turn, huh? Uh, two mana. What is this at the begin? This is the tap thing, right? At the beginning of each upkeep, tap enchanted creature. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, I think. I also don't have combat on this turn, since Stonehorn Dignitary was blinked twice, once during my turn, once from that next Ephemerate. Um, I do not want this land. I don't need to loot immediately. Yeah, so that combat step also got skipped. Oh, this is each upkeep. Not just my own. Alright, opponent has three cards. I have a very large amount of power. I will start with a Faithless Looting. And I have a lot of things to yield to. Yield to both. Uh, yeah. I'm 100% discarding a mountain. I kind of like having four mana. Okay, discarding a lava dart. 
How many lava darts do I have? I have two lava darts, sure. Get in there with both of these creatures and see what happens. Um, I am going to let combat damage happen if my opponent doesn't do anything. Okay, combat damage has happened. Now I'm going to try to kill this. This is a little less efficient than I would like, but kind of commits to some damage happening on this creature in a way that's less awkward for me. I don't love that. Well, all right, so I attempt to do this again. Now I wish I had pulled the trigger on some things earlier, but I wanted to be holding up some stuff. Okay, it's out of play. I am fine calling that a turn there. Opponent has three cards. I have gotten rid of their thing that they were blinking for value. Um, hopefully I get to do gross, disgusting things now. Or Battle Rage is an instant. I also just want to Ancestral Anger. Draw my card, see if I hit a land. Nah. Alright, send in with both. There's no blocks. Go ahead and Mutagenic Growth. Creature is quite large. Go for some glory. This is maybe not playing conservatively enough, but it feels like my opponent would have acted if they had the ability to act. Alright, opponent is at one. I have two creatures in play. Alright, I ate up a lot of clock there. Uh, but I, uh, I got there. Uh, so we are two and one. That affinity matchup didn't feel great, but the other two rounds have felt pretty good. Hey folks, Bill here. Um, please consider throwing me a like on the video or a comment on the video if you've made it this far into the video. It's really important this week as I kind of uh, restart my position in the algorithm after taking a week off of making content. Uh, okay, that's it. Back to the show. All right, I have kept my opening hand for round four here. Um, I've got two lands, I have a bunch of gas, and I have a creature. Um, if I am playing against a like white-black control deck, with, like, Pestilence and a bunch of Edicts and stuff. I think this is going to be really hard. Um, I will... I don't really want to discard any of this stuff yet. I don't think. Like, I theoretically want to cast Looting on one to find a second creature if I need to. So, combo. Yeah, alright. Um, but I have worse things that I can discard. Alright. I shall sacrifice Mage Ring Bully to an Edict effect of some kind. Um, I think this is absolutely, like, the sort of deck that I do not want to play against. Oh shit, it's a Core Skyfisher deck. Huh. Okay. I can Mutagenic Growth Battle Rage this turn. I don't really know that I want to do that, though. I think I just want to play out a Festival Crasher. And then, like, have double creatures in play for next turn. I'll mutagenic growth if I have to. Yeah, that's fine. We'll pay life for that. That's totally fine. All right, goodbye. Play Festival Crasher. And now I, I just get so much value out of these lava darts, right? Uh, in the theoretical world where I go down to no lands in play, I can cast lava dart four times. And each time I cast a spell, I am getting three more power into play. All right, there's some, there's some core skyfisher action. Uh, totally happy with that. I'm just gonna cast a crash through here, draw my cards, see what my options look like. Another kiln fiend. Ah, uh, I really just want to finish with teamer battle rage next turn. I can just play another kiln fiend this turn, like hit for six. Uh, this is very weird. Yeah, let's, let's crash in and see what my opponent does. Alright. Opponent just blocks. I think I'm just going to call that good, right? Like, opponent has one land in play. I have three creatures in play. And a disgusting, absolutely disgusting amount of power. And I'm playing around Edict Effects. This feels really good, folks. Not gonna lie to you. Okay, there's an untapped land. Ripped rats. I'm so sorry, friend. <laughs> I'm so sorry for what I'm about to do. Alright, Lava Darts, Crypt Rats. Get it out of the way. I don't even think I need to do math here. I think, basically, any way I click on the cards this turn, my opponent is going to be dead. Alright, uh, let's Munogetic Growth, a Kiln Fiend. Put all these fun things on the stack. Always Yield. 
Um, let's team her Battle Rage, a Kiln Fiend. The Kiln Fiend alone is lethal at this point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just, just wow. Okay. Um, I've rebooted my computer in the last couple of minutes. Had to carry in groceries. Is there anything I do versus, like, there's something for blue-black control? Wars off Pestilence. Minus one crash through, plus one underground rage hound. That's fine. Um, I almost want two of these. Like, if edicts are a thing that are going to happen, just having this as a body that can come back is really cool. I'm going to board out a second crash through for one of these. This just seems really good. Like, in a couple of the other rounds, I'm like, ah, I could bring in Lightning Bolt. This, this time I feel pretty good about wanting to have another one of those. Uh, and I am very fine keeping a creature-heavy hand here. Playing this deck's really weird, because this is, like, essentially a very aggressive red deck that almost never does anything on turn one. Uh, opponent is going to five cards. And they're, ta they're in the tank, too. All right, they have kept. All right. They have a lot of life gain stapled to lands. I have so many creatures on this draw. This is like absolutely above average number of creatures. All right. So they're uh they're doing the whole bounce my lands thing. That's totally fine with me. Um let's just let's just play the uh, the worst card first. Let's save the festival crashers for a little later in the game. Cuz I do not expect this first creature to live. I could be wrong. All right, there's, there's a cast down. Um, so this is fantastic. Now I will play a Festival Crasher with Apostle's Blessing up to protect it. And then my next turn, if I draw a land, I can play Double Thing. Um, I just don't want them to have an Edict here, uh, which my Apostle's Blessing does not protect from. Okay, there's a Basilica. Uh, my opponent has gotten so much use out of that uh, Crossroads, like holy shit. All right. So, the big thing that punishes me for what I have just done is Crypt Rats. Land drop, untapped land drop into Crypt Rats kills both of these things. The rest is fine. Uh, it's obviously good. All right, I lost my Battle Rage. Golden Egg. This is the life gain thing? Sacrifice it for three life. Okay, so this is another target for, like, the, score, the, the, the core Skyfishers. Makes sense. Okay, they're just immediately sacking it for life. All right. Let's see how much damage I can do in this opening. Field of these. Faithless looting. That means I can flash back this lava dart this turn. Ooh. Opponent's at 27, by the way. I think I'm going to discard land lava dart. Do I want to cash in lava dart right now? It's worth a fair amount of damage. But it means I can't hold up Apostle's Blessing. The thing that beats me this game is a sweeper, and I can't really do much about that. Lava Dart is worth more for me next turn than it is this turn. I think I'm going to just take 10 damage here and call that good. It's possible I'm supposed to hold this back because, like, a Crypt Rats is so good against me. Protection from Monocolored is totally fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's a teamer battle rage. Uh, does that mean my opponent's dead? I can cast one, two, three spells. My festival crasher is six. They're all instants. Yeah, let's let's turn some cards sideways. And um, all right. Let's go. Uh, I, actually, I guess the trample doesn't really matter, but I should do it in the way that is better just for the sake of being in good habits of doing things properly. All right. Now, go ahead and teamer battle rage this bad boy. So this is 10 15. Full. I choose protection from black. That is 21 damage and my opponent is dead and I just won what I think is one of the harder matchups for this deck. Um admittedly my opponent kind of clunked around and mulliganed to five, though. So, like, let's maybe not get overly excited about winning this. 
um, but we are three and one, and I've done so incredibly quickly just in terms of like how long it's taking me to record these matches. Um, round five, I'm going to keep my hand. I don't have the second land, but I'm on the draw and I have a Faithless Looting to find it. And holy hell does this Kiln Fiend get to just like go ham as long as I find the second land. Um, okay, there it is. I don't know whether or not I'm playing against like Blue Red Delver or regular Mono Blue Delver yet. And that really changes how good mutagenic growth is. In case I need a second creature, I'm going to keep the Festival Crasher as well. Um, my hand's pretty good here. Yeah, keeping one of the mutagenic growths let me, lets me protect against Lightning Bolt. Snap is some shit. <laughs> uh, Alright, so that probably means we are playing against Mono Blue. Oh no, opponent did not find their second land. Uh, that is bad for them. And that was a shuffle with the Ponder as well. Uh-oh. Things get a lot better for them if they find that land. Uh, but it's very scary for them if they don't. Okay. They have a Moon Circuit Hacker. That's fine. That lets them draw a card and try to find that land drop. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, opponent had to draw one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they drew six more cards before they found their second land. Uh, I would have very handily obliterated my opponent. The real question was, like, do I just start going for Metamorphos next turn while Snap is down, or do I do this? All right. Um, I assume my pile of uh, Pyroblasts is coming in. All right, Mono Blue Fairies, minus four Ancestral, minus three Crash Through, plus Bolts and Pyroblasts. Makes sense to me. Um, I'm just going to kind of take a quick look here, make sure there's nothing else I want. I don't think I need these. Yeah, pretty happy with this. I'm perfectly happy with this hand. I have two threats. I have a Mutagenic Growth plus a Teamer Battle Rage to represent a lot of damage quickly. I also just have, like, Lava Dart to ping off a turn one threat. I think I'm just going to main phase ping this. Um, if I wait, some shit can happen. Like, it's cooler to hit a Moon Circuit Hacker than to hit this. But I really don't want my opponent to, like, ninjutsu in Ninja of the Deep Hours, and then I end up in an awkward spot because of it. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to play the better or worse card here. I'm going to play the worst one. Actual factual counterspell is a thing, right? Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Overall thoughts on the deck list. Really good. Really good. Um, I don't know what the final length of this video is going to be when it's edited, but this might be like a 40 minute video. This league was exceptionally fast. And you know what? We did end up with an 80% win rate, right? Like that was a 4-1. Like admittedly, our last opponent didn't really make us fight for it, uh, but we were pretty far ahead there. I think they just kind of tilted off after like I removed their one threat to enable like a ninja or something like that. And they're just like, oh, no, okay, I'm done with this one. This matchup's really bad for me or something. Um, no, but like in all seriousness, like this deck is good. It has a lot of pressure and I had the ability to shift into a controlling role more often than I thought I would. Like I am obviously not a control deck here, right? But there were a lot of times where I had multiple creatures in play and I could just kind of sit back and say like, you need to do something. I don't have to go for it here and get blown out. You need to do something or I'm just going to kill you anyway. Uh, and that felt really powerful. Um, I also think this is a deck that you will get much better at playing after a couple of reps. And I think like if you are looking to grind leagues and get ticks playing Popper, I highly recommend this deck. The leagues are fast. The deck is objectively powerful. Uh, and it seems like you're good against a lot of things. Um, I never brought in Brute Force in this league. Uh, again, Alex recommended Gut Shot and Mind Collapse in those slots. I think that's totally reasonable. Uh, but League went well. I don't think I have too many other recommendations for this. Uh, yeah, this was really fun, folks, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. If you're really enjoying my content, please consider doing something to financially support me. As you've probably been seeing on Twitter recently, the old content creators, uh, it's not necessarily the most lucrative gig. Uh, you can support me on Patreon, YouTube members, or you can do a donation deck list.
All right, enough plugging. Have a great rest of the day, folks. See ya.